It is time now for Across Africa. Arise News contributor Frankie Edozian is in the Western African Republic of Ghana and is actually bringing us breaking news. Thank you so much, Frankie, for being w with us. Uh, tell us what uh, the president has said about Islamist insurgency there. Good morning, Debbie. How are you? I'm so this, this morning, uh, President John Drahama Mahama has said that Islamic insurgency is a threat to all of West Africa, not just in places like Nigeria, where the Boko Haram is wrecking havoc, but also to Ghana, where it hasn't happened yet. And really what he's thrown his weight behind is a new rapid response force that will be funded by taxes on people flying into Africa and staying in hotels. What the president of Ghana does not want is to have uh, British troops or French troops come in like they did in Mali to save the day and push out the Al-Qaeda insurgents or whoever it might be. So what they're doing is saying, this is a big problem. If the instability in one nation disrupts all of West Africa. So that's what he wants to do. And that just came out this morning, Debbie. Yeah, that is indeed interesting, particularly since there's been no uh, violence there in Ghana. Any idea what his motivation was with making this announcement now? Well, he has just returned from Addis Ababa, where people uh, all around West Africa, the, the, the West African bloc, had been really discussing the Boko Haram problem, in addition to a, a whole host of other things as well. And he's very, very concerned, because even though there are porous borders, a lot of... Um, Ghana has a very, very strong Islamic community here. There has not been any trouble here, but we do know that a few years ago when there was a Nigerian bomber who tried to blow up a plane in Detroit, he actually came to Ghana and began his journey here. So there's a lot of concern. Ghana has not had any activity per se, but there is a lot of concern as to what could happen here. He really believes that Islamic insurgents have had a foothold in West Africa and it's time to crush it before it comes to Ghana. And, and very quickly before we move on, Frankie, this uh, rapid sure. response task force, is this something that has been formed and ready to go or when would it be ready to go? No, this is an idea that was discussed in, uh, at the uh, AU, AU summit in Addis Ababa and they were trying to get a bunch of people were trying to see if this is something that could physically work. Now, the president of Ghana is the first one to really throw his weight behind it and says, we need to do this. We should not talk about this anymore. We need to do this, and we need to do this now. And here is how we will fund it, Got which it. is a taxes on hotel rooms and a taxes on airline travel. All right. Thank you so much for bringing us that breaking news, Frankie. Let's move on to some of the other things that you prepared to talk to us about. Tell us about this really unfortunate situation where a celebrity pa pastor is under fire after some of the wor worshipers were killed during a rush for holy water. Yes. So this pastor's name is T.B. Joshua. He's a Nigerian pastor, immensely popular, immensely charismatic. Every Sunday in Lagos, Nigeria, about 15,000 worshipers pack through his synagogue house of worship in Lagos. Here in Ghana, his popularity is also strong and very, very much immense, but his buildings and his churches are much smaller. So when he came here about two weeks ago, there was a lot of security services could not deal with the crowds. But the problem that happened recently was that his, uh, his church has a TV station and they had said that they were going to give out this free anointing water, which people believe cures them of all kinds of diseases. And so... This anointed water generally costs about $40, and this Sunday was supposed to be free. And so thousands and thousands of people flocked into a church that can only seat about 1,500 people. And once the service started, there was just a mass stampede to the altar to get some of this free holy water. And then four people ended up dying, and about 30 people were injured. Now, the church says it's going to pay for the medical services and the, for those who suffered injuries, and they were really caught off guard, as were the Ghanaian police. No one knew this was going to happen, but such is the strong belief in this particular anointing water that we have this situation. T.B. Joshua refuses to comment to this in the media, but his church has said they are going to take care of the medical expenses for those injured. What they will do for the families who lost people, we're not quite sure yet. Wow, that really is unfortunate. Let's move on to another topic, Frankie. Uh, it seems as if uh, Brazil has made an announcement to write off a huge amount of debt to Africa. Yes, this is really like a, a game changer for many countries. Brazil has decided that it will write off about $900 million in debt that has been owed to it by at least 12 African countries since the 1970s. And those countries where it does not write off the debt, it is going to restructure that so that the payments are so much lower and they take a longer time to repay it. So Brazil really is 
in this South-South strategy where it believes that it really needs to engage more with Africa. It really needs to trade more with Africa. And in the last few years, they have built 19 new embassies in the African countries. So for instance, Tanzania owes Brazil $237 million. All of that is going to be wiped clean. Congo Brazzaville, a small oil and resource rich country, owes Brazil $350 million. That too is going to be wiped uh, clean. Zambia owes Brazil $113, $113 million. That is out the window as well. What this will do will allow these countries to actually use the money they're going to be getting from Brazil to sort of like uplift their own countries, but at the same time be able to become fuller trading partners with Brazil. So now what Brazil has said is that a lot of these loans were sort of structured when these countries were newly independent and didn't quite know what they were getting into, and so they want a whole clean slate. This really is a great, uh, it's a bit of a game changer for a lot of these countries who have uh, outstanding debt to Brazil. Wow, that is great news for a lot of countries. And finally, in our last couple of minutes, Frankie, tell me about what's happening with Nollywood, the biggest yes. movie industry there. Debbie, tonight in Paris, Nigeria takes over. All for the next couple of days, it's all about the <laughs> we, we should go. Uh, the, the first ever Nollywood... Pardon? Ah. The first ever Nollywood Film Festival is happening, and um, for a very long time, Nigerian film has made an impact on the French, but it's very, very difficult to get distribution. So what's going to happen now is that after this film festival, organizers are hoping that Parisian cinema can carry the Nollywood films. A lot of people in France look to Nollywood, but they can't get access to distribution to these films. So that's what's happening this week, Debbie. That is exciting. Now, you were breaking up just a little bit at the beginning of your comment. Just, just sure. very briefly, in a couple of seconds, you said, for the very first time, and then we lost you. For the very first time, what, Frankie? Oh, for the very first time, Nollywood is actually going to be shown in French cinemas. You know, there is an actual Nollywood TV, and there is a network of DVDs. So if you're in France, you can actually buy Nollywood films. But this is the first time it's actually going to be shown in the cinema. And what the distributors are hoping is that the organizers are hoping that this film festival will allow Nollywood films to be shown all across France, where there's a huge African population very much interested in these films. And it's going to be uh, hopefully the beginning of having better distribution for African film in Paris. So for tonight, which is the first day, instead of uh, having film and popcorn, they're having film with Nigerian meat pies and beignets. <laughs> very, very exciting. Very quickly, Frankie, why are you in Ghana? Right, I am here, I am here training a bunch of uh, American journalists, very smart group of people in international reporting, and we're going to be working on all kinds of projects for the next six weeks. Uh, these are young college students, but I believe they're the next generation of elite foreign correspondents. So I brought them to Africa so they can begin to hone their skills. Very exciting. Well, we miss you. Glad to see you by Skype, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Debbie. Have a great day. You too. Take care, my friend.